Hey guys, it's Jen and it's finally time for my annual Holy Grails. These are my favorite top products from the entire year. I've done this video every single year for the past maybe four or five years. So it's kind of become a tradition and one of my favorite videos that I do in the entire year. This year has been kind of interesting for me. I've been super busy with family stuff and a few different sicknesses. So I feel like my priorities this year with makeup have shifted a little bit as the year has gone on. I really pair down. Going along with the whole KonMari kick that's been so popular and decluttering, I really had that kind of mindset. This year I didn't want to have too many things, but I really cherished the things that I loved the most. So the things I talked about this year, I really freaking love. And I hope that the list is going to be a little bit shorter than previous years, which will actually just be easier for you guys too. That's not to say that this is like totally minimal minimalist by any means. I do like a few things that are a little on the extra side, but everything that I included definitely has its place on my vanity and in my heart. So I really hope you guys enjoy. I'm going to start with foundations. If I'm going to be completely honest, I have been skipping primer which is so out of character for me, but I actually found technically a foundation combo that I've just been so obsessed with and it looks so good and lasts so long when I'm not wearing primer. I don't know why that is. Sometimes when I wear primer, it, it'll ball up and get kind of weird. So I just cut that section out and I've been really loving it and it works even better for like my mom on the go minimalist kind of lifestyle. So the first one I wanted to talk about is my favorite full coverage this year. This is the Lancome Taunt Idol Ultra Wear. This has SPF of 15 and this is a shade that I usually fit more in the colder months when I get less sun. It's my shade, but a little bit more on the lighter side. This is 270 bisque warm. And this is my favorite when I want to go and look really nice for like a red carpet, a nice event. If I know I'm going to be filming and need just a little bit of that perfected airbrushed kind of look in film and photography, this is definitely my favorite. I will say it has a little bit more of a thicker formula. If you want something that will give you really full coverage, but still give give a really beautiful satin finish, then I think that this is a really great option. I swear by this and it's something that I've been wearing a lot more frequently, especially recently because I've been going through a cycle of using retinols and having a lot of hyperpigmentation that I need to cover up and this does a really great job. I need to not talk about each thing for five minutes. This is gonna be a hard one. Okay, gonna try to be a little more quick so that this isn't like an hour long video. The next foundation I really love is from Dior. This is their face and body foundation. This I believe was a new discovery for me this year, maybe last year, but I love this. This is definitely your go-to for somebody who likes more of a natural everyday finish. This just has the most beautiful look one hour after you put it on. I feel like there are very few foundations that after you put it on, it just looks like skin, but this is definitely it. It's a little concerning that it's called like a face and body foundation because those in the past have been really sheer coverage, doesn't really do anything for my skin, but the Dior one is so fantastic fabulous. I do use this on my face and it's probably one of the best liquid foundations I've ever, ever, ever used on my face. It's amazing. The color I have here is shade 2W and this does run a little bit on the darker side of my skin tone. So this is what I wear in the summer. What I've been doing recently to get a perfect match of my skin is mixing my Lancome Taunt Idol Ultra with my Dior Face and Body. And these two colors mixed together are what I'm wearing today. They're just wonderful. They work really well together, but individually, it's because they are also wonderful on their own. So this one is a little bit more like a watery liquidy texture when it goes on. I literally rub it into my skin with my fingers like lotion and I feel like that gives me a little bit more coverage than using like a sponge or other things because it is such a liquidy texture. So this is the perfect one if you just want a little bit of evening on your skin and you still want your skin to look like skin. To go with 
that my favorite concealer. This has been one that I've loved for so many years. This is from NARS and it is their Radiant Creamy Concealer. I know that this is intended to be more of like an under eye concealing product. It is supposed to be radiant, but truth be told, I like using this all over my face. I use it for all my hyperpigmentation. I basically just use it for everything. I personally tend to go for a shade that is closer to matching my skin tone because I do have a lot of hyperpigmentation from acne afterwards. My skin is just very sensitive to pigmentation. It's oil free and it doesn't make me break out worse or anything. So this is the one that I've been using in the shade Custard, especially on days where I'm doing a really minimal to no makeup kind of look. I can just use this instead of using any kind of foundation. Spot conceal, put a little under my eyes because heaven knows I have those really sleep deprived mom eye bags constantly. So this has been such a great savior, one I've used for so many years and one that I super, super highly recommend. Moving on to my eyebrows, there are two favorite products I've been loving. This one is such an oldie but a goodie. This is the Benefit Goof Proof Brow Pencil in the shade number three. It is what I am using on my brows today and it's what I usually go for if I do have a little bit more brown or blonder tones in my hair. If I just have my straight black hair, what I've really been liking is the Hourglass Arch Brow Sculpting Pencil in Soft Brunette. Soft Brunette is still, it's like an ashy brown so it works if you have black hair. My rule of thumb for eyebrows is if you have dark, dark hair, you wanna go one to two shades lighter for your eyebrows because you don't wanna look like Sharpie eyebrows. And then if you have really light hair, like if you're blonde, I would go one to two shades darker than your hair tone to get the best, most natural looking brows for your eyes. So I do like a little bit of a medium ashier tone to my brows so that it's not just overwhelming my face. It does end up matching really well. The thing I really like about both of these products is you get the pencil on one side. They're both really soft and creamy and easy to apply and they don't like tug at your skin or anything. And then the other side has a built-in spoolie. And for me, this is so important, it's so clutch because I like to use that to blend out the hairs and to set them going in the right direction. And it's just so much easier than trying to like rub my finger into my brows to get it to blend right or using a different brush altogether. I've tried a few of Benefit's other pencils and products that have like multiple colors or all these different things, but I always go back to the Goof Proof because it's so fast and so easy and gets exactly the color and results that I want. Same with the Hourglass, it has the pencil on one end and the spoolie on the other. And the thing with both of these is they remind me of Korean brow pencils that I loved like eight years ago but could only find in Korea. I'm telling you, I think all these companies must manufacture in Asia. This one's made in Korea, this one's made in Japan. Can't say enough good things. They make it so, so easy. My favorite bronzer this year is from Marc Jacobs. I believe it's the same favorite bronzer that I've had probably for the last couple of years. This is the Omega Bronzer in Tantastic, 104 Tantastic. This this is my favorite, 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 probably bronzer that I've ever used in my entire life ever. I love that it comes in a ginormous pan because I like using a big angled fluffy bronzing thick dense brush and then I just cut that into my cheekbones and I also use an eyeshadow brush and I've been contouring my nose a little bit, just doing some really subtle everyday contour and I feel like this has made all of the difference in how I feel feel when I just want a little bit of extra. Like it makes you look so much better, but in that way that people can't really define like why you're looking so snatched. It's just a little bit extra refining on the nose and a little bit higher cheekbones. So I might have to do an updated contouring tutorial because I have been using it even on a day-to-day -day basis. I just like that this is the perfect shade on my medium yellow based skin tone and that it doesn't go purplish, it doesn't go gray, it's not too orange. It just 
looks like the natural shading on my skin. For blush, I usually have this and that all over the place, different kinds of blushes, but this has been my favorite. This is the Tartlet Blush Book. It's literally so many different blushes. It has 10 different products right here. It looks very dirty because I have used it almost every single day. And I just like that it gives you a lot of variety. Sometimes I'm feeling like a bright pink blush like I did today. Sometimes I'm feeling like a peach. It kind of depends on what I do with my eyeshadow, what I want to do with my lip color, but this has just been so handy. It's all compact and everything that I would want in one place, which is so, so nice. These are all the Tarte Amazonian Clay Blushes, which have been a favorite blush formula of mine for probably, oh, I want to say like seven years or something crazy like that. It all started with Exposed. It's like a natural brownish pink, so I could just use that to do the contouring on the cheeks and the blush all at once. Still such a beautiful blush. This totally has a dupe of that. Actually, a couple of dupes. Kind of like right here and down here. I can still do that with this palette. Love that. If you guys don't want to get a whole entire palette, I still highly recommend the Amazonian Clay Blushes. They last forever. Definitely last all day on the skin. They just look so pretty. Love the formula. Now this is going to come as zero surprise to you guys, but my favorite highlighters this year have to be my collaboration with Pixi, which still is in Target stores and on pixiebeauty.com right now. These are so good. I know I praise these constantly and you're probably like, yeah, yeah, it's your own product, blah, blah, blah. But you know what? I feel like it's not just when I wear it. If one of my friends wear it, I'm like, that's fetch. <laughs> or, oh, you're wearing Wednesdays, aren't you? Because it just has a beautiful glow on their cheeks. You only need a little bit and it just pops off the skin. There's something about it that makes you look so healthy. But the thing is, it's not all glittery where it looks like you're trying to be 12 years old. It's actually a very, very beautiful refined color that I think women of a lot of different ages can still pull off. It's almost like a slight metallic-y shimmer. It's definitely not sparkly glittery, but it has a glowing element to it that makes it so, so special and really different than other blush highlighter type of products out there. But you gotta try it. If you use this instead of your blush, just sweep it on your cheek, check it out, see what I mean be changed. I love them. Fetch is the peachy one. Wednesdays is the pinky one. Wednesdays you can find at Target's everywhere. And then fetch, you can find on pixiebeauty.com. I, I can't live without these. They're so good. Let me use that as a little segue to my favorite eye product of the moment. This is the Pixi Beauty from Head to Toe collab in the Endless Shade Stick called One and Done. This is what I've been grabbing every time. I just want some little color on my lids and I have like two seconds to put something on my face. It's just the most gorgeous coppery pencil. When it dries down, it stays on all day. You can blend it out before it dries down and it's so, so easy. You don't need any brushes. You don't need anything else, just your fingers to blend it out. And it's so pretty every time. I also use this all the time as a base instead of using a separate eyeshadow primer. So if I just whip this on my eyes, blend it out a little, and then use a powder shadow on top, it makes those colors really pop and stay on all day. This you can also find at Target. Speaking of eyes, I have two favorite eyeshadow palettes that I've been using so much this year. For my everyday neutral kind of looks, I went a little bit luxe. This is from Pat McGrath. It's the eyeshadow I'm wearing on my eyes today. It's been very festive throughout the holidays, but it just has the perfect brown tones to wear on an everyday basis. This is the Mothership Six palette. This is definitely going to be a splurgy, high-end kind of product, but more than maybe any other brand, this makes me really feel like every time I wear it, I'm never disappointed in the formula. The pans are actually like really big sized individually and the colors are so good. They're so good, you guys. My favorite shade in this palette is this little beauty in the corner. I am wearing this on the center part of my eyelids today and it's the most unique. It's like a micro glitter, but it's super, super reflective. It's so 
so pretty on the eyes. It just really pops in a unique way and it has this really frosty, bright, sparkly tone that's so beautiful. And then of course I like mixing that with the matte shades which go on so smoothly and so buttery and so lovely and lasts all day and doesn't turn into a weird color after it sits on my skin. It's not like oxidizing to some strange tones. I just love this. I can't say enough good things about it. Lately, this has been my everyday palette. The other palette that I discovered this year that I've also really been enjoying is from Anastasia Beverly Hills. It's their collaboration with Jackie Ina. It actually kind of, now that I think about it, has the same kind of vibes as that Pat McGrath palette, except this is a little more extra. There are more shades in this palette. They're a little bit smaller, but there are a few ones that are really unique and interesting. I love of this color trust issues just like the most beautiful bright gold tone it looks so good once it's on your skin especially on the inner corners it just pops in a really beautiful golden way and then there are a little bit more brighter tones that are pinks and purples if you want to do something a little more spicy there's a lot of variation if you want to do something a little bit more smoky, but it generally does have that warmer brown kind of undertone and everything. And it looks really good with all of these like fall winter vibes that I've been feeling, you know, like the, the cinnamony, warm hot chocolate kind of vibe. Now that we've been talking about the eyes, I feel like I absolutely have to talk about my favorite eyeliner at the moment. This is from Benefit Cosmetics. With liquid eyeliners, I really hop around from brand to brand. I'm not like hyper hyper brand loyal, but this I was very happily surprised at how beautiful and good and how black it is. This is the Roller Liner Eyeliner and I find it to be very waterproof very very opaque. The clincher for me is that it is so easy to apply. The tip of this eyeliner is a longer felt tip but I think the thing that makes it different is it has a hyper flexible tip. It's very soft, it's not overly hard where it skips and makes a lot of mistakes. I feel like it writes a lot more like a paintbrush. It works so well especially when I'm using false lashes and it makes the eyeliner go on very quickly which which is of course my highest priority. For mascara, there are a few different ones that I have been using regularly, especially lately, but I feel like my holy grail video of 2019, I have to give it to the one I discovered this year, which is Voluminous Lash Paradise from L'Oreal. This is the waterproof version. And I think that this is probably my new favorite over-the-counter drugstore kind of waterproof mascara that works for monolids, which is such a mouthful. But if you guys are monolided out there and you have straight downward pointing lashes, which can happen to anyone, whether you have hooded lids or not, this holds your lash curl. It works so well. So I have to give it up. I'm so grateful for any kind of drugstore mascaras that do a really good job of that. Cause I feel like a lot of the ones that I end up loving that do work really well, sometimes are these $20, $30 mascaras. And considering how frequent you have to buy one that can get really expensive with certain things that I put on my face I'll go high-end always but when it comes to mascara I feel like you can get a really equivalent product at the drugstore for lips I have a couple different categories because these are all different types of products if I'm gonna be talking about a traditional lipstick the kind of lipsticks that I personally love are ones that are very buttery and hydrating don't have the kind of scent that is going to distract me, but uh, the YSL ones, they have amazing scents. It's a little bit like mango watermelony. It's really delightful, but I just really want moisture on my lips. I want my lips to feel very plush and hydrated and not get dry over time, but still impart a little bit of color. This is one of my very, very favorites. It's actually probably like an upgraded version of one that I liked several years ago, but it is the YSL Volupt Tint in Balm in the shade number one. This is a very natural, everyday, my lips but better so I was hanging out here editing the video and I realized that this is the moment where my video cut. 
I lost a big chunk of what I had recorded and so I just wanted to fill in the gaps here because otherwise it's just a weird jump transition where I'm talking in the middle of one product and then hopping to the middle of another one. So just letting you know that the YSL lipstick that I super loved is the bullet shaped lipstick of my three favorite types of lipstick. Super love that. It's a really great MLBB, great for every day if you like a more hydrating feel. And then that brings me to my second type of favorite lipstick, which is Urban Decay's Vice Lip Chemistry, which is more of a lip tint product. It's almost like a creamy gel feel to it, but when it sits on your lips, it kind of adjusts and brings out a nice orangey, natural, warm color to your lips. I think it just looks super healthy. It's really, really flattering on my skin tone. I specifically like the color Streak because it's really, really pretty if you do have more yellow undertones. It just looks like a really natural everyday color as well. So I think that brings me enough up to date where uh, I can continue talking in the video. So sorry for the technical difficulties. <laughs> I like having just a really juicy, natural orangey tint to my lips that's a little bit faded at the edges. It just looks really like bright, summery, almost like you sucked on a popsicle, but the popsicle happens to be the most beautiful, natural color on your lips instead of just like bright red. This is my favorite out of all of the lip tints that I've been really into. This is actually really similar to Benefit's Cha Cha Tint. They're both amazing products, but this is the one that I have been using the most this year. And then thirdly, my favorite category of lipsticks I've been liking has been the liquid lipstick that is matte. So this is what I use when I want something to stay on my lips all day. These tend to be a little bit more on the drying side, but I find that they're actually way less maintenance because you never have to touch them up if you get a really good one. Then my favorite favorite that I've been using recently has been from Pixi. They have a few colors that I've been very much into, but I like that these aren't super, super drying feeling on my lips. They do feel a little bit more plush than other brands of liquid lipsticks. And uh, this is one of my favorite natural everyday kind of shades. This is called Eau Naturale. I guess basically my favorite lipsticks just show that I like being pretty low maintenance, with my lips, I don't wanna really reapply it very much, so they all work really well for that. Let's move on to skincare. I feel like one of the most important and most overlooked products in a skincare routine is the oil cleansing step. It melts all of the wax and all of the color, all of the things that are gripping onto your skin that make products waterproof. It just melts all of that down, and then when you rinse it off, it just rinses clean from your skin. So I feel like especially if you do like using a waterproof eyeliner, waterproof mascara, or a foundation that lasts all day, you have to use an oil cleanser, and this is the one I've been using the most recently. This is from Pharmacy, and it's their Green Clean. I feel like it works so well. It doesn't feel overly greasy on my skin after I use it. It doesn't irritate my eyes. I do have extremely sensitive eyes, so that's very important to me. It also comes with a scoop that I shove inside the container so I don't lose it, because that's always a big problem for me. But I really love it, been using it, for the majority of this year and it has still like a ton left. This is a gigantic container. It's gonna last me forever because you only need a tiny bit of it and it works so well to get a whole entire face clean. The next part of my skincare that is so, so important are the actives. When I'm talking about actives, it's the products that you want to really go deep into your skin to actually change it somehow to make it appear better or do something to your skin to improve it. I'm kind of at a point in my life where I've tried a lot of different potions and lotions and serums and all kinds of things on my skin and there really are only two things that are going to make a dramatic impact on your skin when it comes to acne, pigmentation, and anti-aging. The first one is vitamin C. Everybody, I feel like, should be using a vitamin C serum in their routine. I think my first vitamin C ever was a Mario Badescu one 
And that was such a shocking experience for me because I had never really seen my hyperpigmentation spots actually fade within a week. They didn't fade completely, but the fact that it actually changed instead of just having to wait, you know, three, four, five months for them to go away, I was actually seeing like visible results. So my favorite, uh, this is a little bit of a splurgy vitamin C, but if you've done your research on vitamin C serums, I have to say SkinCeuticals is probably at the very top of everyone's list and anybody who's tried it is like, wow, like it works so well. So if you have the cash to pony up, I definitely think that you want to splurge on a stronger vitamin C product that has a really good record of working well. This one that I used is the SkinCeutical C plus AHA. It has 15% L-ascorbic acid plus 10% mixed hydroxy acids. So if you have extremely sensitive skin, then I would go for the C plus ferulic acid, which will be a lot more gentle on your skin. But for me, I really wanted something that would not only help the pigmentation, I wanted to improve the texture of my skin as well at the same time. So the exfoliating elements really did it for me. I'm not saying you have to use this one. You can do your own research. Highly recommend always, always using a vitamin C. The second active that I think is, again, one of the only skincare ingredients that will actually make a difference in the anti-aging nature of your skin is retinol. Despite what you may hear on any kind of packaging, anti-aging, this and that, it's just vitamin C and retinol, you guys. <laughs> Everything else is like going to help it a little bit here and there. It might make you slightly more glowy or whatever, but it's all temporary. Just vitamin C and retinol. That's all that matters. My retinol that I've been using is also SkinCeuticals because my esthetician Olga Lorenzen, she is the one that had me use this. And this is, again, your fancier retinol, but that doesn't mean you have to use a fancy retinol, but this is the fancy retinol I have been using currently. It's been really making lots of changes in my skin. I actually had one of my friends, she doesn't live right near me, but she did ask me via the internet if I'd been using Botox. And I'm like, no girl, I'm just using this retinol and it's working so well, it's making my wrinkles go backwards. It's making them go back and flatten into my skin. There are definitely all different levels of retinol that you can check out in terms of things that are strong, but a more drugstore price point. Different is now over the counter. It's something I've used in the past for my acne. It does work very, very, very well. There are so many different retinol products on the market. And I highly recommend if you're interested in anti-acne or anti-aging to check it out, do your research on it. I will do a video talking all about retinols in my experience with them in a video very soon. So if you guys want to see that, let me know in the comments. Let me know if there are any skincare actives you have questions about, and I'll try to answer as many questions as I can. And then after my actives in my skincare routine, I of course need to moisturize every single day. And the ones I have been using for daytime and nighttime have been from my esthetician, Olga Lorenzen. These are fantastic products. They do not make me break out at all. And it's really helped my skin to rebalance itself. And that is because the Weightless Moisturizer is a completely oil-free moisturizer and it's still very hydrating. So this is what I use during the daytime. And then at nighttime, I do use something slightly more richer, but also still does not make me break out. This is the Nighttime Skin Quencher. So I love using both of those. And honestly, if there are days where I know I'm going to be wearing a lot of makeup all day and, and I want something just a little more hydrating to have a smoother finish, I'll use the nighttime skin quencher in the morning too. If you have any questions about skincare routines, let me know that down in the comments and I'll try to do an updated skincare routine video for you guys very soon. I cannot talk about skincare without talking sunscreen. This is what I've been using for a while now and I absolutely love it. I know it's kind of obscure. I've never heard about anybody else talk about this sunscreen before, but this is from Aerophotona Actinica Ultralight Emulsion Broad Spectrum SPF 50 Plus. This is a 100% mineral sunscreen. It is oil free. It does not make me break out. It feels really light like a milky fluid. It only has zinc oxide as the active ingredient. As you guys know, mineral sunscreens are a physical block to the sun. You don't have to wait the extra 15-20 minutes for it to absorb into your skin. As soon as you wear it, you can walk outside and have that sun protection, which I think 
is really nice. So I love this one. I've recommended it to a few people and all of them are like, oh my gosh, I can't use anything else. I am interested in seeing if there are other products that are similar to this one. So if you guys know of a good one, definitely give me your recommendations in the comments. I have not been focusing on my hair as much this year. I just do a big chop and change and then kind of let it grow out for several months because that mom life, you know. But one product that I have been loving this year because I am not washing my hair every day <laughs> is a new favorite dry shampoo. I say this in the warmest way possible, but it has a little bit of like hippy dippy packaging. This is by Fat and the Moon and is their lavender and cocoa dry shampoo. What I love about this is if you have dark colored hair, this looks so good. It absorbs all the oils from your hair, but because it's based with a cocoa powder, this is actually a brown powder. So when you put it into your hair, you don't have that white cast. I will say I've tried so many different kinds of spray dry shampoo and it's just not my favorite. I feel like it doesn't work as well as powder-based products and there are a lot of other filler ingredients that they put in there to sort of make it a liquid in the can to force it to come out. Gives it this effect that when it's in your hair, it feels really thick and sticky. There's like a tackiness to it that I really hate. I just like my hair to feel like hair. I don't like feeling like there's any products. I don't like it to feel crunchy or hard and powder dry shampoos don't do that. It's also recyclable and cruelty free and it's healthy for your hair to use. So this has gotten me through on the days where I cannot wash my hair, which has happened more times this year than I'd like to admit. <laughs> so that is finally the end of this very long, lengthy Holy Grails video. I really hope this was helpful for some of you guys. <sighs> it's a lot to go through all of those products. But if you did enjoy it, I would really appreciate it if you would hit that thumbs up button, subscribe if you wanna see more of my videos. And I just really love you guys and I'm so thankful that you're still watching and tuning in and finding some value in me reviewing all the nitty gritty details of every single product. I love you guys so, so much and I will see you in the next one, which will probably be in 2020. Crazy. Okay. I'll see you guys later. Bye.